Almighty God did marvelous things in the soul of St. Rose of Viterbo. It appears that her parents gave her that name by divine inspiration, for it was symbolic of her entire career. As long as she lived, she bloomed like a sweet-scented rose in the garden of the church and in full bloom as she was transplanted to paradise. The account of St. Rose's life mostly remains unknown as the acts of her canonization. The chief historical sources record no dates. Most intellectuals agree she was probably born around the year 1233. A simple Italian peasant, she endured persecution, suffering and adversity, and proclaimed to future ages that nothing is impossible for a soul who truly loves our Lord Jesus Christ. Frederick II was the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire in the 13th century. He came into conflict with the Pope, who excommunicated him. In response, Frederick began attacking the Papal States. In 1240, he conquered the region of Viterbo, Italy. The Italian peninsula became divided into two parties, the followers of the emperor, called Ghibellinis, and the defenders of the Holy Father, known as Guelphs. The people and the Guelph nobles were forced to work in the building of a fortress, transporting stones and wood in an exhausting routine. The inhabitants of Viterbo were threatened with death at every moment, whether due to their misery, hunger, or incarceration in the terrible dungeons they themselves had to build. This is the historic context in which Little Rose grew up. Thus, from her earliest childhood, she understood the holiness of the church and the depravity of her persecutors. Rose was born in Viterbo to a very poor but devout family. Rose was filled with grace from birth. The child entertained a great compassion for the poor. She always tried to save some food to give to the poor. One day, when she left the house with some bread in her apron, she met her father, who asked her in curt fashion, what she was carrying off now. The frightened child opened her apron and fragrant roses were found in it. When Rose was around eight years old, she became very ill and nearly died. The Blessed Mother appeared to her on her sickbed. All of you here, the little girl exclaimed to those gathered around her, why do you not greet the queen of the world? Do you not see Mary, the august mother of my God? Knowing Rose to possess supernatural gifts, they turned and knelt down. Mary told the girl, that she was to take the habit of the Franciscans, but that she was not to live in a convent. She should stay at home and set an example by her words and deeds. After she recovered, Rose took on the rough cloak of a penitent and continued to ponder this vision. Shortly afterwards, she had another vision. This time, our Lord appeared to her on the cross, wearing the crown of thorns on his head and bleeding profusely from all his wounds. He revealed to Rose that his love for men and their sins had caused his great suffering. Consequently, Rose carried a cross in her hand and went out into public squares of her city telling people of the terrible tortures our Lord suffered and of the evil of sin. At the age of eight, 
she began preaching penance to the city of Viterbo and defending the papacy and continued this for the next two years. The sermons of this little missionary had marvelous results. Often, the numbers gathering to hear her exhortations were so great and the girl so small of stature that she had to climb up on rocks to be seen by all. One day, the stone on which she stood was seen to rise in the air. And she was sustained there by a miracle while burning words issued from her lips. Rumors spread that she worked miracles as she spoke, and soon a crowd began to gather around her house. The attention made Rose's father nervous, and he forbade her from leaving the house under threat of a beating. As her popularity grew, Authorities called for her execution, but the city's magistrate sent her and her family into exile instead. When Frederick died in 1250, the Vatican's forces won the day, and Rose and her parents moved back to Viterbo. Having fulfilled the task entrusted to her by the Blessed Virgin, and desiring to withdraw into seclusion, Rose asked to be received into the clarest monastery of San Damiano. But the superior rejected her under various pretexts. Rose did not insist, but announced, You will not receive me now, but the day will come when you will be very glad to accept me. and she resigned herself to spending the rest of her days in recollection in her home. She continued to live with her parents, leading a life of prayer and service. Those who should have supported her despised her as an insane woman and sought to drive her away. However, without the least resentment or complaint, she consoled herself by recalling that such rejections and moral sufferings were also endured by Jesus Christ. After spending several months secluded in her home, the little angel of Viterbo succumbed to the illness. Always of fragile health, Rose rapidly approached her agony. She confessed, received viaticum with admirable piety, and serenely expired, pronouncing the sacred names of Jesus and Mary. Two and a half years after her death, she appeared three times to Pope Alexander IV, who was in Viterbo at the time, and told him to have her body removed to the convent of the poor Clares. When this was done, her body was found incorrupt, and it has remained in that condition to this day. Miracles are constantly occurring at her tomb. Pope Callistus III canonized her in 1457. God our Father, for love of you, Saint Rose gave up everything to devote herself to a life of penance. By the help of her prayers, may we imitate her selfless way of life on earth and enjoy the fullness of your blessings in heaven. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.